This is the sixth in a series of short videos on route planning for GPS navigation. There's a link to the series playlist in the description below. The fifth video discussed some of the limitations and frustrations of previous route export import options. This one shows a newer, better, easier way to get a complete Garmin style route that can be recalculated, accurately follows a route developed with Revero Google My Maps, and includes each of the original user specified waypoints. The free Track to Route tool creates a GPX file containing a Garmin style route from either a GPX file exported from Rever or a KML file exported from Google. I like to plan routes with Rever on my computer for export to my Garmin Zumo XT, so I'll demonstrate based on those. But the method and tools shown here are not limited to Rever or Garmin. It's not required, but I also like to use Garmin Basecamp as part of my process to check and refine routes. With the right configuration, Basecamp is highly compatible with Garmin navigation devices. There are alternatives to Basecamp, like MRI Route Planner, among others. Let me show you how it works. The Catskills region of New York is a nice area to go explore. Plenty of mountains, lakes, rivers, reservoirs, etc. It's a nice recreation area. So I'm going to plan a ride around that area. I'm going to end up at North South Lake Campground for the night. I'm going to start in Pallenville. Just pick a spot right there. There we go. I want to head up north and catch this road up here. So maybe Acker would be a good place to pass through. I want to head over to Stamford. There it is. Put a spot right there. I'm going to zoom in and make sure I'm on the road, which I'm not. Let me adjust that just a little bit. And I want to head down south here because I want to ride around that reservoir and those nice roads down there. So let me pick a spot right up here, which will get me onto those nice Butler roads. And head right down to that edge of the reservoir. That yeah, looks good there. Gets me on some of those roads I'd like. All right. Maybe I'll cross the reservoir right here in the middle and head down the other side of it for a bit. There we go. Then I want to head down and ride around the bottom side of that reservoir. See some nice roads down there. So let's go over here. Head on down to the lower side of that reservoir along the bank there. Make sure I stay on there. Check and make sure I'm on the roads. Just need to tweak a little bit here. That looks better. Minor adjustment there. All right, it's got it. And as I said, I want to end at the North South Lake Campground. I'm going to spend the night there. Search for that. There it is right there. And there is my route. Looks good. So I can save that. I'll call it the Catskills Loop. And let's say I'm going to ride it today. I can save that. Don't need to share it right now. But I do want to export it. I'm going to export it as a track. That gives me the track points and the waypoints, as we've discussed. Let me just pull that file over into a directory I've set up for this. And I'm done with Rever. Now I can open up Track to Route, and import that track that I just built in Rever. This is going to convert the track to a route. The initial route name is from that file. I'll just keep that. The second name here 
is uh, is used to name any of the track points that I have between them. You can see that it's pulled in all of the waypoints with the original names, which I could edit here, number them, and it gives me the option to include track points or not include track points. If the track points are included, they, they don't have any names, so I'm going to specify one here. I'll just call it Catskill. But for the moment, I'm going to turn off all of them. So I'm going to get it route with just the waypoints. But let's say a couple of these waypoints I set up in River weren't places I really wanted to stop. They were just places I used to shape the route along the way. So rather than via points, I'll make those shaping points. You can see I've got a few via points and a few shaping points. And I can export that. It tells me where I put it or where it put it. There it is right there. Just created a new directory right below where I was working, where I started the import from. Now I can open up Basecamp and import that track. There it is right there. Bring that in. I open it up and recalculate it. Here is my root. You'll notice that the original waypoint names are all in my root. A couple of those points have been changed to shaping points. Most of them are via points. That's as I set them in track to root. Looks good. Looks like what I started with back in River. Let me show you a couple other features of track to route, however. I originally specified no shaping points between track between view points. That is, I took no track points. I can set it globally, or I can set to take a couple of track points between particular view points, which is what I'll do here. I've now got same viewpoints, but a couple of shaping points. If I export that, just overwrites that previous file. Let me import that new one, just like I did before. Recalculate it. See, I get the same root. I have the same viewpoints with those same names, the shaping points I had set. But in addition, it has added a couple of track points as shaping points, named those with that shaping point name that I specified back in tractor out. One more little demonstration of a couple of the additional things that you can do here. I can specify prefixes and alternate starting point numbering. By default, it starts at zero. Well, let's say we're going to make this day one and 100, because we're going to go more than one day. I can number all, all the points by default are numbered continuously. I can number just the via points continuously, and then the shaping points will be subnumbered based on those, as you can see right there. Put a couple more spaces in to make that more obvious. Now let's say this is going to be a two-day trip. Right over here, I'm going to split the route right at that point. It'll now show me that I've got two points, two routes. I can change the prefix. By default, it's the same. I can change the prefix if I want to. I can start the numbering, say at 200 for day two. And now I've got two routes, each with the appropriate via points and shaping points. If I export those, it puts the two files in that same directory. There they are. If I go to Basecamp and import those, take them both. There they are. If I open each one of those up, recalculate it. Let's change the color so you can see which is which. I have the appropriate naming from the original River waypoints. Let's make this one a different color so you can see which is which. Recalculate that. Again, you see the appropriate numbering and naming as it was all set in Tractor Out. And there is my route, just as I planned it in River, but now split into two routes with naming of each point from the original River waypoints. Now I've plugged my Garmin device into my computer. It's recognized by Basecamp. Before I transfer the route to my device, however, I want to check my route carefully and make sure it's, everything is well. I'm going to turn on center map here. And as I click through each point in my route, it will zoom in and show me where that is. On my map, I can just make sure everything is on the right road and looks good. 
So far we're good. Now it looks like it's off a little bit, so I just need to move that, hold the Alt key and drag it up to where it's supposed to be. Differences here are just due to slight differences in the maps between Garmin's map and the River map. That's why it's good to check. Looking good so far. This one is off just a bit. Move that back onto the road. And there we go. The rest looks good. Let me just zoom out a bit so we can see it again, see the road again. Now I can simply take that route and drag it directly onto my navigation device. I'll check it carefully there one more time and I'm ready to take a ride. If you'd like to try Tractor out yourself, there's a link in the description. It's entirely free. If you found this video helpful, please click that like button. Thanks.